Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Today, I'm going to go into a virtual machine of Arch Linux and take a look at a little bit of a look at KDE Plasma and the GNOME desktop environments. So let's get to it. So right now, I'm in my real bare metal computer. I'm running Arch Linux with the awesome window manager. And of course, if you've been following my channel, you know, it's the awesome window manager with my configuration file that's ready and able for you to download for free from my GitLab repository. Anyways, I'm going to click on Workspace 8. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to open up Vert Manager, my favorite virtual machine software application that works only in Linux. Now, if you've been following my channel, you would notice or you might notice that I had a lot more virtual machines before. And at the bottom, I used to have a virtual machine of Windows 10 and Windows 11. Anyways, I deleted all my virtual machines. Well, I really didn't delete them. I did a fresh install of Arch Linux on this particular computer, my main production computer. And of course, it wiped out all my virtual machine. Now, these virtual machines that you see here, I've made these all recently since I did a fresh update of my computer. Anyways, I have a virtual machine here of Arch Linux. This one at the very top. This is a virtual machine I did of Arch Linux using the Arch Linux automated installer. It wasn't a manual install. And I went into profiles and I had it installed the KDE Plasma desktop environment. And then afterwards, I manually installed the GNOME desktop environment. So I'm gonna open it up. Let's open it. So this is a tiling window manager. Let's hit play. I'm gonna play this virtual machine. I'm gonna make this full screen. And we're going to boot into this particular version or this particular virtual machine of Arch Linux. And the display manager or the login manager is SDDM, the one that comes with Plasma. I'm going to put my password in. And the Plasma desktop environment, I think it's very heavy. I think it's the heaviest one in the Linux world. I might be wrong. If you think I'm wrong, let me know. Now, Plasma is one of those desktop environments that people love and or hate. <laughs> and I think a lot of people like it because it's very similar to Windows. I mean, it's easy to use. It's user friendly. You have the bar at the bottom. You have your clock here. Oh, you can't see that, can you? You have your clock here. You have your volume control, your audio. And one thing I didn't know that Plasma had, and I don't know if it's new or not, is this icon here. I like this. If you use your mouse wheel, you can look at that, eh? Isn't that neat? Now, this only works in, we have a Plasma, KDE Plasma open with Wayland. So for instance, let's say we log out. Let's go here. Let's go here to leave. Let's log out. Let's log out. So right now, we just logged out of uh, Plasma Wayland. But if we log into um, Plasma X11, put our password in. Let's put my password in. Let's hit enter. And now we're logging into Plasma on Xorg X11 rather than Wayland. We have the icon here. Let's see if it works. See that? It doesn't work. Now the icon is still there to change the screen brightness, but it doesn't work. And another interesting thing about KDE Plasma is they have the ability to do remote desktop. So you can log into it from another computer and have a full desktop environment. I didn't know it had that, but that doesn't show up in Xorg. So if you go into settings and you scan down, you see there is nothing here in the settings to do a remote desktop. So if you're using KDE Plasma on Xorg, you're not going to have the ability to do remote desktop. It's not in the settings. Let's just close that. And also, like I said, this icon is there to do the screen brightness, but it doesn't work. I'm using moving my mouse wheel, but nothing happens. So now I'm going to log out. So let's click on the icon and let's leave. Let's log out. Now I'm going to go up here to this menu and I'm going to go into back into Plasma on Wayland. And I'm going to go here and put my password in. Also, one thing I don't like about Plasma is that it takes a long time to load up. That's because it's a heavy desktop environment. Now it's not as heavy as Windows, but it is heavy. I think it's the heaviest one in the Linux world. Now it's taking a long time to load up. It looks like it's frozen. Oh, there we go. Wow. <laughs> that was a long time. It's almost like loading up Windows. <laughs> so now, we, now we're in a KDE uh, Wayland. 
and we can see this works. If I move my mouse wheel. I really like that. That's fantastic. And now if we go into settings, we have the ability to do remote desktop. Okay, you can see it here and you can see it here too. Remote desktop. Okay, so let's click it on. So I've already set it up and here is my IP address for this particular virtual machine. And I think I'm going to black it out when uh, I'm editing the video. I don't want you to see my IP address, even though it's just a virtual machine. There's the ver there it is there and there's my username. Now if I click this on, if I click this on here, I have my username there and I have a password. And I know it's just a two digit password. That's just a simple password I use for my videos. <laughs> okay. And it's listening on port 3389. So let's close this. Let's cancel it there. Oh, and I had to toggle this on. Okay. So let's toggle it off and let's toggle it back on and let's close it. So now I'm going to see if I can remote into here from my bare metal computer. I know it's kind of confusing. I mean, even though I have this virtual machine open, I'm going to see if I can remote into there from my bare metal computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this like that. And I'm going to go to a different workspace. So I have nine workspaces here. Let's go to workspace five and I'm going to open up Remina. I'm going to open up Remina. Now I have um, this living room here. This is my wife's computer in the living room. It's a real bare metal computer and it's running Arch Linux with the GNOME desktop environment. And there's the IP address. I think I'm going to block it out. But let's click it on. And see, now we're in my wife's computer in the living room, a real bare metal computer. And I'm going to open up Firefox. And I'm going to go to uh, DistroTube's website. He's a person that I watch. I learned a lot from him. And I'm going to see if it works. I'm going to see if we have video and audio. So for my recording studio, I'm going to turn off the microphone. I'm going to turn on OBS Studio to record internally. And if I run INXI without any flags or options, you get a very quick and cursory overview of your system. This is a small fraction of the information that INXI can print out, but without any other flags or options, you get a basic summary. So we can see uh, when I remote into a system, uh, the internet works, the video works, sound works, so forth. And I'm going to close this and it's fantastic. So anyways, I'm going to disconnect from my wife's computer and now we're disconnected. And now I'm going to see if I can remote into my virtual machine that's running plasma. Okay. So that's right here. I'm going to click it on and we've remoted into it, but look at there's something wrong with the video. <laughs> and I don't know why I didn't try to make it work or fix it. That's just the way it is. I don't know if it has something to do with Waylon. I have no idea. Let's just connect and Let's go back to my virtual machine. Let's make it full screen. Oh, the lock went on because I didn't uh, change any of the settings in here. Let's put my password in and now we're back in there. So this is not an in-depth look at Plasma. And one thing I don't like about Plasma is that now I've never lived in Plasma. I've never used it long term or even really short term. I've just used it for videos. <laughs> Listening to other YouTubers, they say that when they configure it, and there's a major update in Plasma, it ruins their configuration. And I believe them. And I know somebody in my real life who installed Linux and he had a um, monitor, had like a real special high resolution. It took him a long time to get Plasma working properly and functioning properly. And he changed some other configurations in it and changed some settings in it. And then there was a major update to Plasma and it ruined his configuration and his monitor his resolution was off and his monitor wasn't working again. So I've heard a lot of negative things about Plasma, that when there's a major update, it ruins your settings. I just want to check, open up a terminal, make it larger. Let's just do an HTOP. Oh boy, we're running at one and a half gigabytes. Well, okay, it's not as bad as Windows, but look how high that's running. Yikes. So let's close that. I don't have anything. Oh, I don't have anything open here, do I? I don't think so. So let's close it. Let's log out. I'm going to log out, log out now. Then I'm going to click on this pull down menu and I'm going to go into now. <laughs> this is weird. This GNOME on Whalen doesn't work. I don't think I tried it the other day and it wasn't working. <laughs> well, it worked. 
So now GNOME is one of those things that people either love or hate. That's a lot of lovers and a lot of haters. I've been using Linux for uh, five and a half years. And for the first four years, I hated GNOME. And I even did some negative videos about it. <laughs> now I really like GNOME. Now I don't use GNOME in my main production computer because I'm a window manager type of guy. And my favorite window manager is the awesome window manager. And my wife's computer used to run the Cinnamon desktop. Now her computer's running GNOME. And if you click on, well, let's just click on settings. But uh, before I do that, let's just do an HTOP. Let's just go into here. Let's type in HTOP. Now look at this. So at one time, GNOME used to be the highest running desktop environment in Linux, running at maybe 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. And look at this. I have it running at 700 megabytes of RAM. Now this virtual machine has four processors, four gigs of RAM, and no swap. So now we're running at 699 megabytes of RAM. That's not bad for a desktop environment, a full desktop environment. Now, in order to get GNOME to run a bit lower, I had to take out GNOME software. I don't know why you would want GNOME software if you're in, a, you know, if you're running Arch Linux, you just go into the terminal and install what you want to install. And if you don't know what the name is or what's available, you go to the Arch Linux website and look it up. Let's close that. Oh, so let's go here. And in case you don't know about that, what I just did is I did to do pacman s gnome dash software remove oh sorry not s <laughs> going to do um r and it's going to remove it and your system is going to run a lot lighter your gnome system that is but this besides the point and if you go into here let's just go into settings right click that and bring that up let's maximize this so you want to go down into system and you want to go into remote desktop you want to make sure these two are toggled on and you want to have your host name in here, not your username, your host name and port 3389 open. Then your username is down here and then here you have a password. And again, I have a simple password because it's a video. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can remote into it now. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to workspace five where I have my Remina app opened up and I'm going to connect here. It's Plasma VM. And there we are. We have remoted into my virtual machine and it works just like that. <laughs> now I'm going to disconnect and I'm going to close Romina. I'm going to go back to workspace eight where I have my VM open up and I'm going to make this full screen. And now we're directly logged into my virtual machine and I'm just going to open up a terminal and I'm going to do sudo pacman s awesome. I'm going to put my password in and we're installing the awesome window manager <laughs> but default this is the default awesome window manager not the one that's in my computer so i'm not going to download my configuration files today and put them in and i'm just going to close this and we're going to log out and i'm going to use this pull down menu there it is there awesome and we're going to log in put my password in there we are we're in default awesome window manager and oh mod key p I don't have Xterm installed. Type in mod key P and I'm going to type in console and hit enter. And now let's do an HTOP. Now we're running at 388 megabytes of RAM. Isn't that better? And now what I'm going to do is I close that and do sudo pacman Xterm. S, put my password in. Do that. Shift mod. Well, let's just close it with my mouse. Now I'm going to do just for the heck of it. <laughs> Ooh. Check that out, eh? <laughs> now we're running at 284 megabytes of RAM. And you probably can't see that. Sorry for the bright white. Let's quit out of there. Let's quit. And of course, GNOME has really nice, uh, easy to use dark style. That's on, that's off. Here's our file manager. So concerning desktop environments, I really prefer GNOME over uh, KDE Plasma. And of course, my favorite is the awesome window manager with my configuration file. And that's it. In this video, I took a really quick look at GNOME and KDE Plasma and compared them. Well, I only really showed a few things. And I really do like the fact that KDE Plasma makes it easy to make your screen brighter or darker. And I was surprised that KDE Plasma has the ability to do remote desktop but I couldn't get it to work. 
and I didn't really try hard, <laughs> but it wasn't working out of the box. And I really do like the fact that GNOME desktop environment runs a lot lighter than KDE Plasma and that GNOME makes it super easy, really easy to do remote desktop with it. And it works right out of the box, just like that. Now, of course, I prefer using window managers and my favorite window manager is the awesome window manager. And this is what this is right here in my main production computer. And of course, this is not default awesome. This is the awesome window manager with my configuration file that's available for you to download. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Lennox Mensch.